Hello there, Cancer, and welcome to your monthly forecast. This is for the month of July, and I'm excited to read for each and every sign this month because what I was sensing as I started to meditate across each sign was that there's a great uh, opportunity for breakthrough to happen this month, and I can't wait to see how that's gonna play out for your sign as we go through all the different pieces of the forecast today. I would just like to remind everyone that you can always use these forecasts for your sun, your rising, and for your moon sign, and you can watch on behalf of someone that you care about. If you don't happen to know all of that information about your chart, just stick with the sign that you were born under, and that'll give you more than enough information uh, to travel through the month ahead. If you're a returning viewer, I would like to say welcome back. You are the reason that I show up every month. I appreciate your enthusiasm and the continued work that you're doing on yourself. So thank you so much for showing up again and taking part in this month's reading. And to everybody that is brand new, a nice warm welcome. Let me just introduce myself first. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. Each and every month I show up and I really create a nice deep in-depth look at everything that's going on. I separate it into the following pieces. Um, starting with channeled information where I use my raw intuition, looking at a Celtic cross to look at both the blessings and the blocks that are coming through for the month ahead. And then I go into four different areas that I know everyone likes to look at, health, wealth, love, and destiny. If you enjoy what you see here, everything is viewer supported and I would love for you to stick around until the end. In addition to giving some closing uh, information and a quick review of everything that we talked about, I'll also go into how you can support the channel. That ranges from liking and subscribing to becoming a patron to even scheduling an appointment if that's something that you're interested in. So again, all of this will come at the end. Right now, I'd like to get straight into that channeled information. So let's get going and see what's coming through for this month. After selecting a deck of cards and meditating and looking at what was coming through just for the sign of cancer, what I saw was um, a dream catcher, and I also felt a little bit of an opening around the ears. Uh, we have different chakras in our body. It's not just the seven main ones. We have like chakras in our fingers, especially those of us that are healers and our hands. We also have like chakras within the ears, and that's where I felt an opening. And uh, when I combined the two, the main message was this piece, which was listen to your dreams. But the dream portion, just like when we look at any card in tarot, when I look at like the dream catcher, for me that is also symbolic of the dreams that you may be trying to create or kind of go after in your life. And I also wrote down that I think that you should honor, nourish, or feed those dreams as well. So with the listening to the dream, since that was the first piece of it, um, for any of you that are trying to expand upon or grow your intuition, one of the easiest and also most accurate and I would say fertile place to explore intuition is through dreams and dream symbology. Long before I ever understood what my own intuition was or how to access it, um, I had very clairvoyant dreams growing up and throughout my life and I continue to have them. And so what I started to do was to write down notes, especially if I saw certain symbols in the dream like whether it's a, a certain animal totem or whether there's other sort of things, objects that you might see, uh, recurring dreams that might come through. And what I would do is record them and then I would pay attention to maybe how long it would take for something to come to fruition or if the, the symbol actually equated something else. This is a really good tool for you this month to pick up on things that are going on. And I find that I, I get both blessings in the dreams and then also possible um, things that I need to work around, a possible block, or if somebody isn't an advocate and I need to be aware of who to watch out for, I'll get warnings in my dreams as well. And what I love about this sort of clairvoyance is just because you dream it, it doesn't mean that it has to happen. In fact, you might be getting that warning so that you can make better choices. That happens a lot for me and it's a very powerful tool and I love it. This is sort of um, something that you can't always manipulate or control, but what I've found is that when and if I really need to know something, it comes to me and I just trust that. And uh, that's, that's the powerful uh, energy and information that I get when I dream. The other thing that you can try to do is program your dreams a little bit. So if you're a lucid dreamer, or if you can become aware of the fact that you're dreaming, you could take advantage of the, the fact that you're already in a very deep a meditative state and you can start to use that to explore things and communicate with guides and angels and even astrally project. So there's some really cool stuff that your sign seems to be able to access this month with, uh, with dreams, so I encourage that. The other message that I'm getting here before we talk about just looking at your future goals, that kind of dream, is that your subconscious is going to be speaking to you through the dreams this month. So 
uh, if there's something in your life that you know you need to deal with or that you need to share, this could be like a literal coming out. It could also be more symbolic about just showing parts of yourself or your life or doing something that you really want to do but haven't been able to admit to yourself. So it could be something like you're ready to quit a job but you're afraid of the rejection that would come with that. Um, it could be, like I said, a coming out where you're afraid of sharing who you love because you don't want to lose friends and family. Um, it could also just be realizing that there's something in your life that's broken. It could be an addiction or uh, some other sort of element that kind of is toxic or holding you back that you've talked yourself into thinking is okay. And the subconscious always knows what's best and will come through in a dream and sort of say, no, this is something that needs to be dealt with and I'm going to show up. And it can show up in weird ways. Uh, again, symbols can be there, but usually you're going to know when you wake up, okay, I got to deal with that. So there can be some clairvoyance, which we talked about. There can also be some just getting real with yourself and seeing something. So it can be um, a latent sort of thing that you've swept under the rug and it can show up as a shadow or something that you're afraid of or that you're running away from in the dream. And I want you to look at that. And instead of running away, face it head on and just think, I, I can handle this. Whatever's coming through, it's, it's me anyway. So if I can love it, if I can kind of throw my hands around it and figure out how I can heal it, that's really what you have to do with that sort of scary or shadow energy that can sometimes present itself in your dreams. Finally, and this is sort of the most on the nose and obvious piece, if you have a dream in your life, a goal, um, an aspiration, I want you to try to do something this month to progress towards that dream. So if it's something that you've put on the back shelf so that you can take care of a loved one, be a good parent, um, meet the expectations of your, your family, whatever you've been doing and sacrificing your own soul and self, uh, this is a month to bring that back to center stage and think, no, I'm, I'm just as important as all these other things around me and I have to honor myself as well. Otherwise, um, I'm not being honest and I'm not being integrated in this lifetime. All right, so there was a lot that came through, but I think there are different people that are watching this month that need to hear those three parts of that message. So um, that's what came through in the channeled information for all of you. All right, let's move along now and look at the Celtic cross for this month. I'm going to remain quiet at this point so that I can get additional information as I'm laying down the cards. But afterwards, uh, I'll break it down and we'll talk about each and every blessing and block for the month ahead. I was really excited to see your Catalyst card this month. Um, just a quick reminder, the Catalyst is how you can access your highest energy, your highest opportunity, and perhaps overcome blocks. It connects everything that we see. So in many ways, this is the most important card that I'm gonna pull. Um, and the snake has multiple meanings. First of all, it's a card of power. And it's a card of taking people by surprise by sometimes exercising that power uh, when they may least expect it. So I've seen this in several different uh, signs this month and yours is the most potent of any that I've seen. With the snake, you have an ability to uh, basically come in and take advantage of a great opportunity this month. Now, what I, when I look at a snake, it acts quickly, it doesn't hesitate, and it has the element of surprise. So, if you're thinking of launching a business, if you're thinking of proposing to someone, if you're thinking of trying to somehow get an idea out there and gain acceptance on it, you want to choose your moment well and you want to move forward without hesitation. So really think through how you want to present yourself, how you want to articulate your ideas 
and what your motives are for things this month because with the snake there's no room for hesitation, second thoughts, etc. Snakes also change. There's a little bit of a shape-shifting element. They shed their skin. For many of you, there is a push, a really big push, not even a subtle one with this card, to let go of something, to evolve, to move on, and to try something new. In some ways, the snake can kind of be like the fool in that, in that sort of respect, which is, I don't need to be who I was, I need to be who I am right now, and if I don't change, then I'll die. They have to let that skin go or they can't grow. So it's the same sort of metaphor for you this month. If you stay stuck, too long in one particular place, then you're no longer evolving. And this was that sort of subconscious message pounding on the door saying, hey, it's time to wake up, it's time to move on. And there are a few cards here that show movement. We'll talk about it in a second, but I do see like the Six of Swords, the Three of Swords, the Eight of Cups. So I see travel and movement as a component of this month. So don't be afraid to change and evolve and let things go because it is a part of the natural growth process. The other thing, and we can't ignore it, is that snakes can be tricky. And so there could be someone in your circle of friends, or there could be something in the language of a contract this month that could be a tripping point. Now, you know, we'll have to look at this. A snake doesn't usually bother you unless it's kind of stepped on or scared. So when it comes to people in your life, there's a general note that if there is someone that's a little tricky or a little sneaky, just leave them be. The same way I wouldn't agitate uh, a snake, I'm not gonna try to agitate that person if I know that they could kind of snap back. Um, and I would also say when it comes to a contract, if you have this feeling in your gut, in your intuition that says, I don't know about this, honor that as well because it's probably not exactly what you should be doing. Ask questions, get advice, make sure that you understand everything in front of you. Overwhelmingly though, I really like the snake card. It's a potent card that shows that you have an ability to stand out, to take advantage of the element of surprise or timing this month, and that you can change. Those are the, the great elements. The only warning is to be mindful of not unnecessarily like shaking the hornet's nest, okay? As we look at all of the cards, this will come into greater focus. Uh, your central card is the Queen of Swords. Really great card to start the spread off with. This is showing that you have an ability to be strong, to be outspoken, to communicate really well. Uh, the card is not reversed, so there's really not a warning of coming off the wrong way. Assertiveness and uh, yeah, open communication, it seems to re be really good for you, and so I'm not worried about that. I would just say, use your words well, wisely, and um, know that there is uh, an ability for them to really hold a lot of power this month. So uh, yeah, just don't unnecessarily say things and know that sometimes, even if it's not recorded on paper, it gets around and it has a long, uh, long-standing effect. So think of great public speakers in history that really try to use words of love, of compassion, of encouragement, and you want that to be your legacy uh, rather than sort of negativity. So imagine everything that you say is gonna be published and that it's gonna be weighed against you at the end of your days, because it kind of is, and that changes the way you might communicate this month. We have the Emperor or the Lord card here, and it's crossing the Queen of Swords. Wow, you, some of you should be in um, public speaking opportunities this month, uh, taking this a stand on something that you care about, standing up for yourself. So if there is something that you've ever wanted to talk about, maybe it's advocacy, um, some sort of public service, or again, communicating that you're ready to become someone else and you know go after something that people didn't expect that you'd want to go, to go after, this is the month to really communicate that without apologies. Be honest. Um, speak from the heart and be yourself. All right, now for the changing, now for the shifting, and now for some of the more difficult cards that you'll have to kind of move through first in order to get some of that power and that, uh, that strength that we're seeing right at the center. Deep Past, Six of Swords. So many of you may be at a point in your life where you're either in the middle of a change or you've just gone through one. It could be a move, it could be sort of a winding down of a relationship or a job. You might be in something where you can kind of sense that your job is ending or there might be layoffs or restructuring. The Six of Swords is an ending, but there is some sort of a heads up that it's happening. And there may be a, a decision on your part or someone else's to create some distance and space. And uh, what I'm seeing here in the near future, we'll get to the other cards in a second, is for many of you, this could be something that you weren't 
wishing for. But nonetheless, when we look at this from a relationship or a life perspective, this is to bring you into eventually a happier space. When I see these two cards, it looks to me that it's inevitable that some sort of a shift has to happen. When I looked at the message in the recent past, what I heard in my head is you reap what you sow. So for those of you that have been working really hard to improve upon things, the Seven of Pentacles can show repair, improvement, growth, and recovery. It's a great card. For those of you that are aware but may not be actually putting the energy into the improvement, it stands here as a reminder that it's necessary. Now is the time to take action so that you can still steer the ship and change direction. When or if you decide to ignore the Seven of Pentacles, what can happen is uh, things start to get behind in your life. Uh, you could end up kind of creating more debt than you need to. Uh, your health could be going downhill a little bit or you just start to feel like you're pulled too thin when it comes to time and energy. So getting back to the original message of reaping what you're sowing, it's important for you to spend time, energy, and resources, money um, in the right way this month. Uh, if it gives back to you, if it feeds your soul, if it's also helping you be independent, be self-sustaining, then it's the right thing. If it's making you feel less than, if it's kind of depleting your nest egg, it's not the right thing. So make smart choices this month and you'll be on the road to financial security. We have a very interesting message in your crowning position. The Eight of Cups is reversed. This card, of course, is one of second chances and doors that have not been completely shut. It can also show travel and astral projection for that matter. But let's talk about the first piece, the doors that aren't shut or second chances. All right, so for those of you that might be going through a breakup, we have the Six of Swords, we have the Three of Swords, clear indications of separation, moving on. Um, this could mean that there is a second chance. And by the way, in the environment, we have the Two of Cups reversed. The Two of Cups, of course, can indicate a very close relationship, whether it's love, family, or friendship. And the reversal is showing that imbalance that we're seeing and possibly what caused the separation that's coming through. So back to the Eight of Cups. This may mean that for some of you, you just need some time and space to collect your thoughts. And there's a little bit of a, both a warning and an encouragement there. If you truly love whoever you're with and you're just feeling like you've lost the ability to connect, uh, this would be a time where maybe instead of saying the words like, I don't want to see you again or get out of my life and saying things that you, you could regret, Instead, say, I need a little bit of time to sort things out. Maybe you talk to someone. Maybe the two of you can go to therapy together because the Eight of Cups shows me that there doesn't have to be a hard and fast break and it doesn't have to be forever. It really depends on what you're looking for in your life and in this relationship. If you're single and happy, um, this can actually indicate for you that you're letting go of something that wasn't suiting you and there may be a business trip that's on the horizon, particularly with both the Six of Swords, travel and the eight of cups also travel and it could be uh, two different trips for that matter so there's some exciting changes if you're not really focusing on relationships uh, this shows growth movement again possibly some better paying opportunities on the horizon as well and some financial improvement too so uh, it's really up to you and how you want to focus this energy in your life this month but i see some shifting some healing and some improvement on the horizon for many of you. In your ego this month, we have Princess of Wands and the card is in the reverse state. And the Princess of Wands is a great card actually. Um, this is showing the delivery and receipt of ideas, of information, and the reversal is a reminder to stay as open-minded as possible. Um, because in the upright position, it's really kind of like a satellite that's capable of sending and receiving without any blocks. The reverse is saying though, that you could have some preconceived notions and ideas of how things have to be this month that could in fact limit or even blind you to something that is there and available for you. So try to stay open and that right above this card is the Two of Cups, which means that some of you may be receiving constructive feedback or information from a very close source and they're from what I can see, really trying to keep your best interests at heart, but because it might be something that's difficult, you may feel that it was um, a betrayal or an overstep for them to say that. Check your assumptions, take a break, and remember that all you have to do is receive, not necessarily judge the feedback, and over time you're gonna have the information that you need to know whether it was valid or not. 
In the hopes and fears area, we have the Queen of Wands in reverse. So Queen of Swords came through at the center. Great job communicating, great ability to make a, a splash with your words and with whatever you're sort of putting out there in communications. But Queen of Wands in reverse can show that when, it, when we're looking at management, time management, resource management, and just business affairs this month, no matter what's going on, there could be some challenges. Someone could be challenging your authority there. And I see a lot of personalities in all of these court cards. So for many of you, you may have to answer to a few people or you may have to make sure that your, your voice, your thoughts um, are heard in this bigger group as well. So be careful. And the tricky person that seems to be coming through this month is the King of Wands and the Queen of Wands because right above it we have a King card here as well. So when I see this, and it's also connected to the Two of Cups, there could be a partnership in your midst that could not necessarily have your best interest at heart, or they could be someone who are coming with a different perspective and a different idea, and your challenge this month is going to be, one, is it valid? And two, how can I kind of integrate it into what I'm doing? So in one way, shape, or form, you have a little bit of a challenge coming through, and it is with personalities and another relationship, even if it isn't a romantic one. And it, especially if it isn't a romantic one, it means that there's sort of an alliance or a, a group of people that are tight knit. And what you wanna try to do is to let them feel listened to. That's why we've got the page card here in reverse or the princess card in reverse. It's saying, listen, acknowledge, and then try to find a compromise because I think that's what, what's gonna have to happen for many of you this month. When I look at all of this in the context of what might be a breakup for some of you, there could be a third party involved because we have a partnership here at the end, but it looks like it's separate from the partnership that you were involved in. So, you know, this, this could be simply someone coming in and coming between you and someone that you care about, a lover or a friend. It could also be that that person met someone new and whether or not the breakup was finished, there could be a little bit of challenges here. So I see a lot of personalities that are coming in and that there's a little bit of an overlap in some of them and at the very least you're going to have to acknowledge a sort of contrasting point of view so in doing that you're going to be able to avoid the sort of snap moment that we saw where like if you step on a snake and it bites you what you want to try to do with these two people the king and queen of wands is don't come between them don't challenge them and try to see where the two of you the two groups can come together because there's always like a Venn diagram where there's something that you share in common. That's what you want to focus on this month is the similarities, the common goal, the bigger, uh, the common interest for the group or the company or the family. And that's going to help you resolve the conflict. Remembering that your crowning card was one of a gentle sort of movement. The Eight of Cups does not mean that you have to tear apart something. It means that you take time, you think about it, and you come back and you heal. And that was what I saw at the beginning. There is, move, there is a second chance or there is a uh, movement towards healing and I hope that you can achieve that this month. I think it's a great spot now to uh, move along now to the expanded forecast and we'll get some additional information as we look at health, wealth, love and destiny. We're going to start off with the health message, which is a combination of your mind, your body and your spirit. So in the mind, body, and spirit area here, we have workshops and seminars. It says, uh, attending and giving speeches is part of your spiritual path and purpose. Be open to teaching and learning. And it's interesting because we do get that sort of management and public speaking card here right at the center. So Queen of Swords, one of the best public speaking cards you can get. And then also when we're looking at an Emperor card for many of you that are self-employed, that can show that you're in your element this month when you're really combining the energy of the two of these. Um, you'd also benefit from treating yourself to a retreat. The Eight of Cups is equivalent to, you know, a yoga retreat or a one day seminar or just taking some time off and, you know, taking a hike one afternoon. Uh, but it's important for you to sort of get away from things in order to pull in all the information and uh, really decompress and integrate all of this. So whether it's a formal sort of learning situation or just a chance to meditate and take it all in 
learning, integration, knowledge really wants to come through in some shape or form this month. So try to create space. And again, for those of you that might be trying to save money, we saw the seven of pentacles. This can simply be you deciding to take a day and do some reading, listen to a podcast, or meditate and work on your intuitive gifts. It doesn't have to be some sort of formalized thing. But if you want to this month, the energy very much supports that. And for those of you that might be entrepreneurs and thinking of new things to do, this is a great time to work on a curriculum or a longer term project. Let's expand the forecast now and take a look at your wealth card and see what's going on, not just with uh, money, but also self-worth and opportunities in your life. Your message in wealth is about listening, receiving, and allowing things to come to you. So this really does go in line with what we saw in the ego a few moments ago here, the, uh, the Princess of Wands or the Page of Wands card, which is just allowing for things to come to you without immediately judging or deciding how this may be good or bad. I'd also like to highlight the contrast between the Seven of Pentacles, which can show growth after a time of being limited to the receiving card here, which shows like unlimited potential. Don't allow any of the limits or echoes from the past, whatever it was that you were trying to fix, heal or move past, um, hinder your present because pulling it back to the catalyst, we have the snake, which is shedding your skin and letting go of things that no longer suit you. If you continue to think in a limited scope of how much you're worth, uh, how much you're going to be able to make, how much you can pay down something, then it's going to cut off this flow of abundance. So simply suspend that disbelief and think this month I am open to everything changing. I'm ready to change. I have the power to change. That's why this came through. Also, when we're looking at receiving, I want you to honor, feed, and listen to other people's dreams in your life. This could be a child. This could be someone that you are a mentor to, a mentee. This could also be, for those of you that are in a position of power or authority at work, um, someone on your team. If you don't honor and sort of build and nourish their dreams, how can they ever help you as well? This is a symbiotic relationship. Uh, so overall, you're going to be helping yourself and helping others and celebrating their success when it happens because one day they'll be celebrating yours as well. So again, Share the love and the love comes right back to you. Speaking of love, that was a nice segue into that. We're gonna be looking at um, relationships over the course of this month. When I look at love, it's not just who you love, it's how you are expressing your love to others, friends, family, and everyone else in your life as well. In love, there's a simple message this month. Do you want to live in the past in what was, or do you want to create what can be? We have here visions of life beyond death, which is an acknowledgement that some of you have moved through a period where you said goodbye to something that you cared about. It could have been a person, it could have been a, a situation, a job, or some sort of a project. You might have even lost something that was very dear to you. Uh, but Right underneath this card was the receiving card, which shows me that you're on the precipice of some sort of a breakthrough, which is what we talked about, I talked about way at the beginning. Your breakthrough this month is, will I continue to look over my shoulder or am I going to focus on tomorrow, on the horizon, on where I'm headed? It's a powerful decision. My advice here is that it's much more enjoyable to really embrace hope and opportunity than to look back and sort of beat yourself up. So use what you learned from the past, the pain, the lessons, the knowledge, and now build upon those sort of building blocks, those lessons, and create something new. Dream of something new, which brings us right back to what we were talking about here, honoring, feeding, and listening to those dreams. That's the important thing. That's really where you want to shift your attention and your energy. So this card now becomes very important. This is your destiny card, which is how do you steer the ship? Are you happy with where you're headed? Do you want to change? Let's see what the GPS says for the month ahead.
So we are getting confirmation here that right here, right now is where the attention should be focused. There's a lot of beautiful things coming through. It's also an answer to those of you that might have a question, should I do something? Where should I be putting my energy? So it's on what's in front of you this moment. And there is a need to sort of act on much of this. So with now, it's about being present. And you notice here, this is about kind of someone that's reaping what they sow, very much what we saw here. These are the two different sides of the, the same message I got earlier. So uh, know that what you've been working on, it will pay off. You do deserve it. And you have to keep the vision of abundance here. If you can envision more of this, then it will come through. Your choice this month is either to sow seeds of hope or doubt. Use and choose hope instead. It's going to be a much more fruitful bounty in the long run. You're going to be able to continue the growth, the improvement. You're going to be able to open up the doors to more um, opportunity in your life. And this may be something one day that you can share with other people. There's a, a lesson that some of you have gone through that others may really benefit from hearing. Let's go ahead now and review everything that we just talked about. And after that, I will give you the closing word for this month. Listen to your dreams this month. There will be clairvoyant messages for many of you. For others, it could be your own subconscious reminding you of what you need to pay attention to. Also cultivate, feed, honor your dreams that you had as a child, things that you wanted to actually see come into fruition. Do the same for friends, family, and coworkers. Uh, it's a great thing to give that energy to someone else and know that you'll get it back when you accomplish your own dreams as well. You have the power of the snake card here in your catalyst, the ability to shape shift, to adjust, the ability to use timing to your advantage, and also to let go of things that no longer suit you. Just like the snake, you can shed your skin, you can move past any sort of perceived failure or challenge that might be moving through your life at any given time. Communication is at an all time high this month. And for those of you that own your own business, Queen of Swords and the Emperor card are showing that you're in a really good place to be able to market, to sell, to engage people around you. In fact, we saw here workshops and seminars. Some of you may have life experiences, a story, or some sort of healing energy that you might be able to share with others. There's also a lot of travel that I see around you as well. So feel free to capitalize on that if that's something that makes sense for you. In the deep past, we have the Six of Swords showing that for some of you, you've already walked away or you're in the process of walking away from something. There is a little bit of emotional healing that needs to take place with this. Remember that this doesn't have to be a forever decision. Eight of Cups tells you you can come back to that if you need to. With the Seven of Pentacles, there's growth, there's movement when it comes to finances. And we saw kind of a bookended note here. You reap what you sow. Um, so if you really want to sow the seeds of hope, of opportunity, of growth, then that's what's going to come through. And you want to start doing that right here, right now, so that you can continue this trend of abundance of receiving that we see here. Um, as we look at the near future, Three of Swords, again, moving past disappointment, remembering that it's okay to grieve a loss, but as we saw with love, you have the ability to move beyond any perceived losses in your life. Remember to stay as open-minded as possible this month. Uh, the key thing for you is simply to acknowledge and receive feedback or ideas. This is what's going to continue this ability to receive new things. If you block that, then you're just cheating yourself and possibly others of uh, a new way of doing things or a new idea for doing things. Relationships overall could be a little bit tricky this month. We saw some of you might be stepping out of one. There might also be a partnership that is challenging you, a couple like a close knit group. And what you want to try to do this month again is to acknowledge whatever their point of view is and know that it's not an either or. There might be an area of compromise. When we're looking at both the king and queen of wands here in opportunity and outcome, it, again, it's showing more than one way of thinking through something or getting something done. It also shows that you might have two or three things that you're trying to juggle this month because for me, these are often cards of ideation, of ideas that are coming forth. Try to pick the strongest one and focus your energy on that. This is a great month to get involved, whether it is some sort of expansion of knowledge or it's a group activity or even a support group. We see workshops and seminars in the health area. So expanding your mind, connecting with people that love and support you, that's really important and you're gonna benefit from that. With wealth, abundance wants to come in. Don't doubt it, don't push it back, stay open-minded. With love, whatever you have lost, 
it is not the end of everything. There's an opportunity for a new beginning. There might even be a second chance for reconciliation. So try not to see things in um, simply shades of black and white. There's, there's gray in between. And when you can compromise, when you can look at new things, when you can imagine a different future, then the opportunities start to open up. Remember, right here, right now, remain present. Start to work on the things that matter. Focus on developing, on healing, on continuing to grow and shedding your skin because you have a lot of energy, power, and possibility in the month ahead. Don't second guess yourself. So this brings the July forecast to an end, but I think I left you with exactly what you need to navigate all of the opportunities and potential blocks. If you ever have additional things that pop up in your life, maybe it's a question about a relationship, a job, or even spiritual development, feel free to reach out to me. If you click on the first card in the video or the first link below, you'll be taken to a page on my website where you can check out rates and availability. If that's something that makes sense for you, then I really look forward to talking to you. If, however, you would just like to say thank you and support me in a different way, um, I mentioned at the beginning that everything that you see here is viewer supported. If you click on the second card or the second link, that'll take you to a different part of my site where you can do a one-time contribution. These contributions not only help me buy the supplies that you see in the video, but they also help me set up the necessary time on my calendar uh, to really do all the production for this because once I've recorded it, I have to edit it, upload it, etc. The whole process takes anywhere between four to six hours per video. And the longer that I have, the better quality that I can make them. And the sooner that I get the contributions, the sooner I can get these videos out each month. So if you want to support high quality videos and you want to see them come out quicker each month, consider giving back. Something as small as $1, either uh, for the whole year or on a continuing basis month to month, makes a big impact. Um, that $1 every month is like 12 bucks a year, less than the cost of eating out, but it really allows me to do a lot and help a lot of people as well. So um, I'd like to say thank you in advance to anybody that's considering doing it and to everyone that's done it before you made today possible. So thank you again. The third way that you can support the channel is really easy and it doesn't involve anything but a few clicks. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do that now and like the video as well. And if you want to share this on your social media networks, this is very valuable because the whole reason that I show up every month is to try to create a free resource for people that need it and to try to spread more light on this planet. And so when you share it, you're an ambassador and you help me in that sort of goal of creating more teachers, light workers, and ascended um, thinkers on this planet. So please click the third link in the third card and you can join me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and anything else that I forgot. And then share that to your feeds so that again, we can spread the light. For your closing message, I wanna highlight three cards that uh, really kind of popped out at me as I was looking at everything. The first is that change is already underway. I think it's interesting that I'll use this analogy, but it makes sense. When you look at financial markets, sometimes you can't see what's happening until maybe two or three years or even a decade has passed and you look back and then it all makes sense. With your life, the same thing can happen. Change is always going on, but it's subtle and we can't always see where it's taking us until we've been sort of taken along on that journey. So I want you to start to Feel that every single day you're moving forward, even if you can't see how far it is. It may be an inch, it may be a mile, it may be even longer than that. It might be like a light year, but what you have to start to believe in your heart is that I'm constantly evolving, I'm changing, I'm shifting, and that means that if you're not happy with where you're at, that tomorrow you're getting a little bit closer to where you need to be. That brings us to the now, which is receiving. It's here, it's coming in, opportunities are knocking on the door. But you have to have the vision, and this takes us back to the channeled message. Honor, feed, and listen to your dreams, and start to dream the dream of tomorrow. And then start to every day plant those seeds that allow it to happen. This is what you're going to do to be successful this month if you want to. And um, I'm just reminding you that there are new things that are coming forth, even if you left something behind. It created the space for growth, just like when uh, a farmer will go in and clear the field. If she or he doesn't do that, then nothing can grow in its place. So clear the field, uh, start to plant those new seeds, and have faith and trust that they're going to grow faster than you imagine. All right? Wishing you much love, light, and abundance now and always. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again in one month's time.